So in this uh, module, we're going to cover technology, which is chapter 19 in our text. So chapter 19, technology. And so really, this chapter is our first look at producer theory. So up until now, we've really concentrated on what we might call consumer theory, about how consumers make decisions about you know what's their optimal bundle and things like that. Well, now we're going to kind of take a very similar look at producer theory in terms of how producers of products are going to maximize profits or alternatively minimize costs. So this is our first look at producer theory. So in this chapter, we're really going to concentrate on, on constraints and kind of these natural constraints that a producer might have. Constraints um, on firms' behavior. And as I said, I'm really going to concentrate on kind of what the book might call these natural constraints. And really that means, it has to do with not about, you know, the, the kind of market they're operating with and in terms of like what other producers are doing, how they react, but we're going to look at a, a, much com, a, a much different kind of constraint in the idea that you know, in the production of certain goods, we have limits on our productive capability based on the technology we have at, at the time. So that's the idea. So nature imposes constraints that's supposed to say constraints, um, in that there are only certain uh, feasible ways to produce something. Certain feasible ways to take inputs. And we'll talk about kind of what inputs you might be, what inputs kind of are in a second and uh, you know, put inputs into some kind of black box and get some outputs um, as a result, and produce outputs. You know, we only have certain technology, um, certain technology is available, and maybe that technology is changing over time, but if we're just looking at certain, you know, if we're looking at a certain point of time, they have a certain technology to take these inputs into some, into their production capabilities and produce something as a result. This chapter is going to look really similar. Hopefully I'm going to underline as we go through. It's going to look really similar to the consumer theory stuff that we were learning before. Just kind of slightly different language. But we're going to look at things that are kind of like indifference curves and and think about eventually things that are kind of like a budget set. And so that's the idea here. So this will look and maybe sound very similar to consumer theory. So there's going to be lots of parallels. It's supposed to say theory. Um, there's going to be lots of parallels between kind of what we studied so far this semester and what we're going to see in producer theory. Instead of maximizing utility, it might be minimizing costs, that kind of thing. Let's begin by kind of, I've kind of already mentioned these terms, but let's make sure we're on the same page about what they mean. So inputs and outputs. So inputs are often called factors of production. Um, and so really, you know, these things are like land, labor, and capital. You know, we usually put them into these kind of broad categories. Land, labor, so land is, you know, the land you have to work with. Labor is the, um, you know, the labor you're using the production of something. Um, capital and raw materials is uh, often another category, broad category of, of inputs or factors of production. 
So I mean, I think land, labor, and raw materials kind of speak for themselves. Um, you know, what capital is, and maybe you've seen this a lot, but what capital is are like finished goods, so produced goods, that are used in the production of other goods. So capital inputs are produced goods, so they're goods that are produced by so maybe some other company that are used in the production of other goods. So things like machinery and computers and things like that are what we might call capital. So for example, machinery. And you know, we want to make sure we, we differentiate between, you know, lots of times you might think a startup needs quote unquote capital. Well, when people say that it needs capital, start usually in a startup in, in a when you're using it in that sense, you're usually talking about like financial capital in order to be able to um, you know maybe scale a production and stuff. Here we're we're talking about a different kind of capital. And so sometimes you know you want to differentiate um, might want to differentiate between financial capital, you know, and this is kind of what I meant by, you know, these startups, they need money to get started, and sometimes they're like, oh, we're searching for capital. They're talking about financial capital, mm -hmm. whereas here I'm kind of more referring to um, physical capital. So we have some inputs, which are these factors of production, which we often categorize in these four different capital, uh, four different categories. And outputs are just what's produced from these inputs. Um, output of finished products. Or, you know, finished products in terms of the firm. So like we're taking these inputs, we're putting them in, in some kind of maybe a black box, so to speak, like a production function, which we're going to talk about in a second, and we get outputs as a result. So this is what the firm produces using these inputs. So what the firm produces slash sells. Not that they have to be finished goods in the sense that you know we're only looking at uh, we're not looking at any intermediate goods or something like that. There could be companies that are producing these intermediate goods and, and their output would be intermediate goods. But when we're talking about outputs, all we're saying is like we put some inputs and this is the outputs are what the firm produces. 